Hey you! Welcome in this video and today we are going to see how to destroy White's player after the first move d4. How to create chaos and win tactically. Without further ado, let's dive in. After the first move d4, White would like to play a solid game with maneuvers and like that, but we can strike instantly in the center with the move e5. And now after this, we can play the Englund Gambit with the moves knight uh, here for example, knight c6 and after knight f3 we can develop the queen. I have uh, three videos about them, you can see them, you can follow the link below, the description, below in the description and see these videos a little later how to win with this gambit and now we have something different. We can play here instead of move knight c6, we can play d6, the hard lap charlic gambit. Very interesting because we are sacrificing the pawn and let's see how to do it? After this move we can capture with the bishop and now we have development for the sacrificed pawn. White will happily capture this one because he may hurt. If you, if you would like to win some gambit you should accept it but you, you cannot do it right now in this particular one because black has fantastic compensation. And for example after this knight to g6 and our idea, our main idea behind the moves is to develop the bishop, after that develop the queen and then we can cast long side. So we will have our rook on uh, d8 and you can see a lot of accidents can happen in the deal file because our rook there is extremely active. And for example after this bishop here and e3. In the next game I'm going to show you how to play if white just developed the bishop. But here we have this move e3, queen out, bishop to e2, long castling and here you can see the power of black pieces. Actually it will be better for white, white is begging for to, to have an extra pawn here, black, it will be nice if black had an extra pawn here, but actually it's not and now the d file is open and for that reason white cannot castling because we can win instantly. After this check he can capture a rook and after that we can capture his queen and you can win with an extra queen, right? So for that reason he cannot castle and he should play another passive move bishop d2. What a passive position, right? And black position is very nice because we harmoniously develop everything and we are ready to attack in the king side or to control the center. For example here short castling and now how to start the attack h5. What is the idea? The idea is to continue pushing this pawn forward in order to open up some lines. And now, after the move h3, we can continue our very very strong attack after taking and eliminating a key defender and after that we have queen to e5. Look at that beauty! We are threatening here a checkmate on uh, h2 and there is no easy way for the opponent to do some. He played this only move and now h4 try to open up more lines, he cannot just capture there or, or push the pawn because we have this checkmate checkmate on uh, h2. So he give a check here on g4, take, queen takes and f5. White is happy, black is happy to sacrifice more material in order to open up lines and after this we have taking and now he cannot just take with the pawn, it looks natural but he cannot do it because we can capture with the rook and now we are threatening this one, we are threatening to double here and he has real real problems. Instead of that he didn't capture with the pawn, he just captured with the queen begging to exchange queens. But when you have the attack, we have a key rule here, you should not exchange queens, you should continue attacking pressure, pressing and creating threats. For that reason we have queen to f6, attacking the queens once, queen once again with the bishop and after that we have a beautiful move rook h6. The idea behind this move is to put the rook on g file to pin the enemy queen, this is one idea and the second idea is to double here and attack this pawn on h3. So we have knight d5, queen here, stop the threat, he cannot capture our queen and continue threatening this move queen uh, rook g6 pinning the enemy queen. So we have queen f3, we have this one attacking h3 pawn, the rook goes away in order to create little room for the king in order to escape as you can see, to run away, but after this we have queen g2, knight e5, now he is threatening a lot of things like knight uh, to f3 check and after that we have this uh, knight f3 in any case, king here try to run away and now we have take, take and f4, another strong move because now he is threatening this move on f3 
f3 double threat and uh, actually white cannot do anything here and he just resigned. This was the first game. At this point I'd like to talk about the chess opening package which contains Scandinavian defense, Grand Prix attack and Benko Gambit. If you click in any of those links you can see the detailed curriculum of the lessons. Each course contains theoretical videos and analyzed games. In total we have 46 theoretical videos which are more than 11 hours and approximately 200 analyzed games. Only one hour of a professional trainer cost approximately 20 euros and you can see here the outstanding final price of these packets. If you are interested and you would like to own these packets then you can click the link in the description of that video. Let's jump now to the second game and after these first moves we can play d6 sacrificing that pawn he can take, bishop takes, knight out, knight out, knight here and bishop g4. And after bishop g5 as we promised here he would like to attack our queen but we can play the move f6 attacking his own bishop and after that we have queen to e7. It looks not good because uh, where we are going to develop that knight right but black has more urgent tasks right now to develop his king to queen side castling long side to put the rook against the enemy queen and his queen here has some problems and later we can play moves like g5 or knight h6 and knight uh, f5 try to attack this bishop on, uh, on h4 and now he continue with e3 long castling and white uh, black has compensation for the sacrificed pawn because he has very nice development he can capture the pawn here actually to attack the queen this is one idea or his pieces are extremely active. So we have bishop d3, knight here, not only pressing the bishop on d3, but in the same time the knight on f3, queen here on e2, and in this position black didn't play the best move actually. He, he could continue something like knight h6, or he could play bishop to b4, try to double all of the white pawns, but he just captured there. Okay, it's a normal yeah, it's a normal move to do like that to do it right now, but he can do it little later. He should develop the pieces first. And now after pawn takes g5, bishop back, bishop before, approximately. Ho ho! Like time. Twenty-one fifty. Elo rated players played there and this rating was on lead chess in real life in feeder rating you can decrease the cello with 300 elo points approximately something like that in order to understand the level of uh, the players or they could be approximately 1500 elo players in feeder rating actually they could play fast actually and achieve this uh, rating and here what we can see he played d4 actually okay this is a normal move and now knight h6 white returned the favor he didn't play correctly queen c4 wasn't correct move he should play something like that or castling short sides try to do something else because after this we have knight c4 and after h6 takes takes and here black again didn't play the best move he when when you can develop your piece or when you can create a threat you should do it you should not exchange pieces uh, just like that and now black just captured that pawn it's not a bad move at all but he can do it a little later actually he could play h5 with the idea to play h4 and create some problems for that bishop but okay he played uh, bishop takes pawn takes and now he played this move we have h5 because black is threatening to play this move h4 to trap the bishop so we have this one takes takes and now we have a very interesting moment because black can sacrifice the knight here the enemy king is still in the center of the board and when the enemy is still there you can open up lines in order to create an attack to start an attack and after this we have the check and after that we have double attack against the king and the rook so this is the only move to connect the rooks and protect h1 rook and after rook d6 for example we are threatening many things like rook c6 and after that we are threatening this one, we are protecting there maybe we would like to play rook e8 to give some checks on e3 or things like that this rook is tied down to this uh, to the defense of the bishop for example he cannot move away because we will have this double attack attacking the king and bishop so he has a lot of problems and black has compensation here 
returning to the game he just played this one and uh, maybe white felt the pressure and he played king a4 and now black strike him out of the blue he just sacrificed the queen here very nice tactic actually because after this he can take with the knight attacking the king and queen and after this he can take the queen he can capture there rook eight, rook d5 for example protecting the pawn and preparing rook f5 rook f8 to attack this pawn on uh, f3 even black uh, can increase the pressure with this move knight d2 this knight is powerful by the way because it's uh, attacking this pawn and white have uh, has some problems here to solve actually a lot of problems to solve for that reason during the game after this beautiful move queen takes e3 he didn't capture that one he captured there and now we have queen takes on f3 and black is threatening a lot a lot of things here it's how to create threats white threatened to capture the rook but we created a stronger threat the first visible move is to capture the rook, very obviously, but we have a hidden move and the hidden move is to give this check with a knight because we are attacking the queen and king and this pawn is pinned and after this check for example the bishop is unprotected as well so this move queen takes uh, here it's powerful and after this he give a check and after that move we have the final checkmate queen g2 checkmate now let me show you another game and here after these uh, first moves he played knight uh, to c6 okay with transposition we have the same line and this is how you can transpose from the uh, one line to the other and after this white played uh, bishop here he didn't capture the pawn and he would like to capture on d6 to create some problems here to isolate the pawn on uh, on d6 but here black continue with this move and after that we have the trick here and the trick is queen f6 because we are attacking the bishop we are attacking on b2 and we would like to capture the pawn later what he can do actually we are threatening a lot of uh, things so white has to play something like that queen to c1 and now bishop takes 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 and knight b to d2 long castling e3 and we can make a little pause here to understand the position black sacrificed a pawn but he has a fantastic position very very active position he is ready to connect the rooks and he has compensation again for his sacrifice pawn his next move is stunning he played a very very nice move and this move is f5 usually we should develop our pieces but sometimes you can make a pause and play some very strong moves pawn moves this move is very strong because black's idea is to put the knight on f6 and after that create a very strong outpost very strong square on e5 for the knight imagine this knight could, la could, could land here and he would like to unstabilize white's position let's understand now how white will play it's very difficult to castle queen side actually because the queen is stand there there is no clear way how to remove the queen to put it on c3 or something like that and we have a very nice powerful on this d line so it's almost impossible for white to castle long side and after this normal move bishop here knight there h3 maybe he's weakening a little bit his uh, king side uh, more and after this exchanges knight e4 it's obvious that white uh, is going to cast long short side and now black start a fantastic attack and this is g5 what is the idea behind this move to play g4 and open up lines against the enemy king you see we're controlling the center we have opposite castling and in these cases we should attack in the enemy king side and now after rook here he played queen to f6 he just played knight d2 the idea is to exchange some pieces but black didn't uh, cooperate with his opponent he keep the pieces on the board because you can see black white pieces are in the first two ranks right he don't have space he don't have activity he has problems and now after this black didn't uh, care about the next uh, move he played g4 in order to open up lines he don't care about the pawns he sacrificed a second pawn in open in order to open up lines white accepted the challenge king king here and after c5 knight to f7 knight f3 back and he didn't exchange the pieces he played rook to g file because he is attacking the bishop and now he created a lot of problems the correct move here is to play bishop to 
bishop h5 and after that black has compensation because we have two fantastic knights this uh, g2 pawn is a little vulnerable maybe the bishop is vulnerable we are threatening something like that to attack the bishop and we are creating a lot of problems but black is a little better here he has the initiative even if he has two pawns even if he is two pawns down but during the game he played this uh, this move this mistake actually the players was uh, 2600 uh, had the white player, very strong player, and the black was approximately 28, 2800 yellow players. So both of them are very, very strong, probably title or close to the title players. And here black is winning. How to do it? Easily. We have a pin and we can capture this pawn because this, we can capture the knight because the pawn is pinned, cannot capture the queen, cannot uh, leave the king unprotected and we're threatening to capture the bishop as well. Black has an extra piece and he, he managed to win the game after some moves. For you who, who watched the video so far, I'm going to show you how to play with the white pieces. Now you're on my files, on my desktop, desktop and I'm going to show you how to do it on my files. I'm, I'm going to open this file and after that sublines and after that I'm going to open this uh, file D4 sublines and then we have the file with a lot of sublines and after that I'm going to open this gambit here we already examine. I flip the board to have the white pieces and here let's see how to play the white and after D4 and E5 we can, play, we can capture this one and after D6 you should not cooperate with your opponent what, what he is threatening actually, he is threatening nothing here, black is threatening nothing and if you understand this position clearly then you should develop the knight, this is the best move actually. I checked uh, Litz's uh, database, I checked Chess base, I checked many many database, databases and here the most popular move is this one and this is not good because black has a lot of compensation and he can develop his pieces very very uh, clearly and effectively so you should develop the knight and you're waiting what he's going to do if he just captures here you can capture the queen you're exchanging the most powerful piece and after that knight takes you're threatening here a double attack you just develop a piece you have an extra pawn and the position is com almost winning for white here almost winning position so he has to do something else he has to develop the knight actually or to develop the bishop he has two options we're going to see them both after this here we have an extra pawn probably black is going to capture this pawn in any case but we don't care about that we should play the momentum and right now this pawn is there and we should create problems and the stunning move is bishop to g5 this is explanation mark fantastic move and we are aiming to exchange his bishop his dark square bishop what he's going to do now and after queen d7 he is not cooperating he might uh, keep the pieces on the board now we can capture there and he can recapture with the bishop but the position is completely different right now it's different because he cannot create any real troubles here in the d file he don't have the rook there the queen is in front of them he cannot develop the bishop so he don't have harmony how he is going to develop this knight if this knight goes out we can capture this knight with the bishop so our next move is knight c3 queen d2 for example e3 long castling and we have a harmonious position now let's go back and see the other move the another nice move bishop g4 it looks very normal to develop the bishop and now we have some amazing variations amazing please sit down and look here we should do again you should develop the bishop and this is a powerful move it is two explanations mark actually because it is destroying black's dreams this pawn is there we are hoping to exchange and ho hoping to exchange the dark square bishop and he don't have tricks here for example if the, if the pawn was uh, here on uh, e3 he can capture the knight and after that the bishop and create some tricks but now this pawn is here and this bishop is very 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 secure so what he's going to do probably he's going to play here queen uh, if he just developed the bishop i'm going to show you this variation we can capture and after this we can take there and after this this is a completely disaster for black because we created a strategically winning position if you just follow my lessons on scandinavian this is a scandinavian pawn structure with the reverse colors and we are winning here because we can play something like that and after that this and after that bishop e2 castling short side and you can see this pawn is extremely weak we can play something like knight to c4 or we can build the center with this one and after that build build the pressure with the rooks 
on the D file it's completely winning position maybe we cannot win after 10 moves maybe we will need 100 move or 200 moves but we're going to to win guaranteed and uh, here he should do something else right he cannot really play bishop to e7 he should do something else and he could play queen d7 it looks very normal to play li like this one and now we can develop the the pieces knight here he can capture in order to capture our extra pawn he's going to to destroy our pawn structure and after this it looks that black is okay right because he just uh, developed the pieces he gained back his uh, uh, his pawn and everything looks nice actually it's not because we have a stunning move a fantastic move out of the blue and this move believe it or not is bishop h3 whoa we are sacrificing the bishop like that, right? Take some breaths. Actually, he cannot take the bishop because after this, again, this powerful bishop on g5 help us to create a checkmate threat on uh, d8. It's a checkmate. And if he just captured the queen, we can capture with the rook. And take a look, because we just developed four pieces here. Four pieces, we are ready to castling short side. Yeah, we have double pawns. We have fantastic activity, actually. And after a normal move like that, we can take or we can take the bishop or we can play rook to g1 but we have another stunning move our real threat and real threat was bishop to c8 because this pawn is under attack we're threatening to capture there and then the rook so white can win that game like this i hope you enjoyed that video learn a lot of things and hope to see you soon thanks for your time and i hope you enjoyed the video here it's time for action this is the initial page of my website and here you can click give me access to get access to free lessons. You can read this page and if you scroll down here you can add your name and your email. After that you're going to take a free lesson how to avoid chess blunders. So time for action is now and you're very welcome to join my mail list.